At this cemetery in southern Tunisia, Nadia visits her mother's grave. In this district on the island of Djerba, dark-skinned inhabitants and those with a lighter skin are not buried in the same place. Nadia's mother was buried in a piece of land in the so-called slave cemetery. Two other cemeteries lie a stone's throw away, reserved for Ahra or free men, people with light skin. This situation was always like this. We got used to it. Cemeteries for slaves and cemeteries for free people. Everyone has their own corner. Black Tunisians, including some descendant from slaves, make up a minority that is barely visible in the North African country. On October 9th, Tunisia's parliament adopted a landmark law penalizing the use of racist words, the incitement of hatred and discrimination. These acts are now punishable by three years in prison and a 5,000 euro fine. Of course this law will free us somewhat from this sort of ghetto and separation. Today, when we ask to fix all this, we have something to head towards. We will head towards justice. Unlike big cities such as Tunis, in Djerba, the inhabitants bury the dead without requiring permission from the council. This allows for divided burial sites according to social status or even skin colour. Until today, town halls in Djerba use a designation on birth certificates referring to the master who granted freedom to the ancestors of certificate holders. In the neighbouring town of Gospa, many complain about the prevailing racism. They will tell you that there's no discrimination, but it's very present. They say there's no difference between white and black, but in reality it's the opposite. In reality, they despise us. The mentality here hasn't changed. For activists, the October 9 vote is already recognition by the Tunisian state that the problem exists. They are now hoping to move towards reconciliation, ending distinctions based on skin colour.